I had a condition that was called acute hemorrhagic necrotic pancreatitis. You don't live with this disease. Now you can live with pancreatitis, you can even live with acute pancreatitis, but you do not live with acute hemorrhagic necrotic pancreatitis. Duncan had told my two sons that I would be dead before morning. They didn't expect me to survive. And, uh, you know, I'm laying there. Now, I, I'm a professed atheist, and when I say a professed atheist, I didn't believe in God. Uh, I believed in the power of the universe because I'd seen it. You know, I'd seen it, life and death. As a physician, I dealt with life and death. I, I believed in something, but don't talk to me about God, and surely don't talk to me about a resurrection or a virgin birth or this type of thing, because I am in research science. PhDs in research science, the majority of them do not believe in God. They do not believe in a supreme being. They believe, that, and they're beginning now to believe that there is order in the universe. Uh, because as we get farther and farther along, uh, we see the order. But I was an atheist. Now see, it's very easy to be an atheist when you're successful. You have worked your way from Oklahoma welfare to being one of the most powerful men in your part of the country, one of the most powerful men in the state of Oklahoma in relationship to political. It's very easy to be an atheist when you have done all of that. Man can sit back and say, I don't need God. What is God? But it's very difficult to be an atheist when you're laying on your deathbed because you begin to think, what if these people are right? See, there'd been one man by the name of Ron Short that has stood between me and the gates of hell. One man that had witnessed to me about the love of Jesus for five years before I became ill. One man. And, you know, I would debate him. And I liked him because he did what he said he was going to do. I mean, he was the only one that I saw that professed to be Christian that lived what he said he was going to do. Uh, and so I, I really respected him. I didn't believe what he said, but I respected him. But when I'm laying on my deathbed and knowing that I'm going to die, guess who I thought about? I thought about what if Ron is right? What if there is a heaven and a hell? And so the most immediately, immediately, the most pressing thought in my mind is, how do I get saved? What is saved? What is saved? How do I get saved? And so I sent them for Ron Short. I wanted him to come down uh, because I wanted him to do ever what he had to do. I had no idea. How can a man hanging on a tree in Israel 2,000 years ago, what is that to me? But I knew that he had something that I had to have. And that night, see I had him go for Ron, but Ron wasn't home. Ron was in Alabama. And so I had him go and send for Ron. And that night was the longest night that I've ever had in my entire life, before or since. And that night is as I would be laying there in bed. As I'm laying there in bed, I would begin to fade away. I would begin to fade away. As I would fade away, I would begin to go down. It, now, it was like darkness. It was like, it was so, so dark. It was like the very darkness just penetrated into your very, very being. And as I left, and I can tell you I left my body because I remember when I came back into my body. You know, I don't know where I was out of my body. Now there are people that talk about the, the, a light. There are people that talk about floating above. There are people that talk about a feeling of warmth and love. I didn't feel any of that. I felt none of that. I felt un told terror on told terror because I knew that if I ever went all the way if I slipped all the way I would never get back now in my beings of beings I knew that 
And so I fought all night long. They told me later on, I not only pulled the mattress cover off of the mattress, I pulled the mattress up on me because I had to stay. I had to wait. I had to wait till Ron got there. Whatever he had to do, I had to wait. But I would, again, and then I would leave, and I would, I would be going down like a deep, deep, dark terror. Now, my, my skin began to get cold. Now it's not like cold when you walk out into the air. It's like bone, bone chilling cold in my lower extremities. And you can feel the coldness begin to come up the legs. And again, I would begin to leave. Now, and I would be in that darkness and I'd be in that void. Uh, and I remember one time entering back in my body because when I entered my body, it was like, just like that. I felt my body thud, my physical, body thud when I entered back in. Now, I, believe me, believe me, that is the most horrifying, terrifying experience that I've ever encountered. And I fought all night long, and the next morning, somewhere 9, 30, 10 o'clock, in came Ron. And Ron came in and he says, Dr. Whittaker, what do they say is your chances? I said, Ron, they tell me I have none. He says, now's the time. And I said, you're right. I mean, I'd cursed him, I'd spit at him, but now was the time because I had to have whatever he had because I had a short period of time on earth and I didn't know, I have any idea when I might make that trip and go all the way.